Good evening and welcome to everyone for this 53rd leadership conversation we are hosting today, Ms. Megha Tata. She is the Managing Director, South Asia of Warner Brothers Discovery. It is a very good time to have a conversation with uh, Ms. Megha Tata and uh, it's become a larger, bigger organization. And uh, we are extremely thankful to her for giving us this time in spite of her busy schedule. So ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming her and without wasting much time, we will have her introduction and uh, we will, before that, uh, once again, welcome to you, Ms. Mehta. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dakar. And thank you very much, everyone, for this warm welcome and uh, an opportunity to speak to all of you today. Wonderful. Uh, what I will do is I will do a small introduction quickly. And after that, I'll hand it over back to you. So this is the 53rd leadership conversation, as I mentioned. Uh, we are having Ms. Mega Tata. She's going to talk about... Uh, Innovation in Digital Entertainment, the Trends and Opportunities. It is moderated by Professor Rat Prasad and I. Ms. Megha Tata joined Discovery Communications India as Managing Director of South Asia on uh, 1st April 2019. Ms. Megha has held several leadership roles at organizations such as BTVI, HBO, Turner International and Star TV in an illustrious career spanning over three decades. An industry veteran, she leads multiple national as well as international industry forums and an esteemed member of the National Media and Entertainment Committee of FIKI, co-opted as the director on board of Indian Broadcasting Foundation and is also the second woman to ever become the president of the India chapter of the International Advertising Association. Ms. Mega has been instrumental in launching several marquee projects for the network in India, including the launch of streaming service that is Discovery Plus, now India's largest aggregated real-life infotainment OTT service. Under her leadership, Discovery has forayed into original Indian content with Discovery Plus launching a slew of exciting originals, including the critically acclaimed Into the Wild with Bear Grylls episodes with film stars Rajni Kant and Akshay Kumar. Her knowledge and deep-rooted understanding of the business have aided the network to achieve new heights in the animation genre with Discovery Kids' smart strategy and marquee content lineup for the Indian audience. Rebranding Discovery's sports channel, Eurosport, in March 2020 is a journey that's worth a lot of lessons. In 2020, Discovery India retained its position as the most trusted real-life entertainment brand by TRA Research Private Limited for the 10th year in a row. 10th year in a row, that's an amazing thing. With content beams with content teams being singled out for innumerable accolades, including Network of the Year, as well as Best Entertainment Program and Best Infotainment Program for Man vs. Wild with Bear Grylls and Prime Minister Modi at the 25th Asian Television Awards. Ms. Mega has been bestowed with multiple accolades uh, during her career. She is recognized among the top 50 influential women in India, uh, women in media, marketing and advertising, and was also conferred Women of the Decade in Media by the Women Economic Forum in 2018. In addition to being very actively involved in industry initiatives, Ms. Megha is energized by engaging with young minds through guest lectures at leading education institutions uh, and is passionately involved as a volunteer with Isha Foundation, a nonprofit organization started by Sadhguru. Uh, I'm extremely happy. Once again, I welcome you, ma'am. And uh, that's an impressive, very, very impressive profile. Next, I will also introduce uh, my uh, senior colleague, uh, Professor R. Prasad. Uh, he is uh, the director of academic wing at ICFI Group. Uh, he currently holds the position of professor and course mentor for the online MBA program that we have launched. He comes with a rich three decades of experience as an entrepreneur and, and also in the professional world, apart from the academic world. He graduated from IIM Kolkata and uh, his BTEC was from IIT Mumbai. Mumbai. Research and publications are several journals and books and conference papers that he presented. Welcome, Professor Arpasar, to this conversation. So with this, uh, I'll now request uh, Ms. Megha to start her opening remarks. Uh, we will come back for questions and answers. Uh, so she will talk for about 20 minutes. And if you have any questions, in addition to what you have already jotted down and shared with us, you can key in the chat box and we'll pick it up depending on the requirement. So thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Let's welcome Ms. Megha Tata. Thank you so much, uh, Sudhakar, and thank you, Mr. Prasad, and everyone who's uh, joined in. Thank you so much for uh, your time. It's pretty late in the evening, but I'm told this is the time slot. You, we do this every year, so, uh, so I guess you guys are used to this. Uh, so the topic was um, 
uh, about innovation in digital entertainment and what are the trends and the opportunities. Of course, it's a it's a very uh, evolving uh, industry and an evolving topic for that matter because that is what innovation is. You know, what you innovate today is probably outdated tomorrow. So, uh, but however. I just thought I'll pen down, uh, sort of pen down a few points which I will share with you, and um, give you my perspective. And of course, uh, if you have any specific questions, agreement or disagreement for that matter, we can keep it at the end of the session. Um, so, post and uh, you know, quite a crazy phase we went through. We have inched into a new year, and I'm hopeful that the new beginnings and oppor opportunities are coming our way. Uh, while we know that the last two years have been uh, quite crazy for all, uh, it did leave us with some learnings, you know, and we know that, that that has shaped our growth per se, personally or professionally. We've all learned something out of these two years, at least I definitely have. And needless to say that digital adoption was the most substantial uh, impact which happened in this pandemic across sectors for that matter, whether uh, you know, and it's industry agnostic, but, you know, everyone sort of adapted and adopted to the digital ecosystem. And OTT hence bridged this gap in the entertainment appetite, offering a chance to the consumers to stay updated with variety of content, whether across languages, geographies, uh, and so on and so forth. So, you know, even for us, uh, you know, you from a five-year-old watching a little singham to a 70-year-old catching the legends of Ramayana on our service Discovery Plus, streaming, binging became uh, the new norm, you know. So that's how people started consuming a lot of content and because there was, uh, and the consumer was spoiled for choice. So clearly that's been the overall evolution, so to speak, which has happened in the last couple of years. But digital entertainment goes beyond content today. So from cutting edge special effects developed for movies, uh, which is now adopted across other industries to streaming media, virtual reality, gaming, and the new delivery channels for news, music, advertising, the media and entertainment industry is largely driven and refined, uh, defined by technology across the spectrum. We, we hear about the buzzwords like metaverse, NFTs, AR, VR, you know, it's all doing the rounds and the digital entertainment is slated to go even further immersive and innovative, which is exciting, yet quite, um, I guess, we're all apprehensive as well, how this will play out. So I just thought I'd talk about four or five key trends which uh, we are seeing in the industry and, uh, uh, you know, just touch upon some of those, uh, those points. Um, and then we can sort of discuss, debate it later. One, of course, there is a content fragmentation also taking place, right? Um, there is an upswing in demand, that's for sure. And it's coming from non-urban India for OTT content in the preferred languages. And this will only galvanize into a big momentum in this year. Now, the formerly underserved regional audiences is one of the fastest growing digital demographics that's making OTT prioritize localization. Uh, beyond just the availability of content in vernacular languages, the efforts will also become more sensitive to local cultural nuances, social context, themes to make content more personal and relatable. Content fragmentation is a key trend, and that's enabling uh, streaming players to uh, reach out to niche audiences with specialized offerings. So uh, for instance, uh, now streaming services like Prime Video, Z5, um, they're all investing quite a bit uh, in the languaging, uh, in multiple language repertoire, uh, which is catering to different cohorts across uh, different, um, different markets of or different geographies of India. And uh, they're, they're moving, um, towards a future actually where the, um, where the quality of stories will define success and viewership and not just the language they are made or even the star power for that matter. So it is this, it's, it's the quality of content versus the quantity uh, which is obviously going to play a bigger role. And this is frankly nothing new. This has always been the case for any content consumption, but it only is getting more enhanced and pronounced uh, in, the, in the digital world. 
uh, even in discovery plus for example uh, we are cognizant of this paradigm shift and hence we are constantly investing uh, in creating languages dubs uh, for our tentpole properties as well so while we launched as an international you know we have a lot of international content but that relatability uh, came through stronger across the market when uh, we started dubbing so um, languages and regionalization is going to be uh, going to be one trend you will see in this year and coming forward so which is why the content fragmentation that one size fitting all will not happen and hence you'll see and if you look at what's happening in the movie i mean all the south indian films whether it's <clears throat> pushpa to rrr to kgf these they've hit the storm in in the so called um, bollywood world right so um, this is the trend you're seeing so this the, you know the south in, indian content is moving into the uh, to other markets and um, korean content is getting global right so there is a whole fragmentation which is taking place which is uh, basically uh, creating uh, i guess complications for broadcast and platform owners but huge huge choice for the consumer so that's that's the one trend uh, we are seeing um the other thing we which which is pretty interesting is the branded content piece you know so today's digital viewer is uh, spoiled for choice and is defined like i said with limited attention span you know people uh, generally don't have too much time um and they are just wanting to watch content which is uh, you know uh, faster it, it's shorter duration so uh, that is something uh, which you're going to see more and more of it as we go along um so it's very imperative that the regular uh, and, and but there is advertising which is a key contributor to the revenue ecosystem of most broadcasters for sure so um uh, we the customers is becoming more and more aware and vocal about their brand choices so in the face on the face advertising will be a strict no no like they don't want like right in your face so how much can you uh, create a, a, a communication which has the integration of the brand is going to be an interesting play out it is something we've been doing for quite a while and done some great work on that but you also see other brands doing it for example um, you know mtv coke studio right now that started as a partnership with coca cola but the concept by itself was a huge success and uh, you know there are of course versions and seasons of that which came about even us like for example we have this show called the discovery super uh, school super league it is the india's largest quiz program it is supported by byju's and uh, we are back you know they come back year on year we are in the fourth year of renewal with them um, and it is so byju's is not just advertising it is integrating it to what their core proposition is which is about education through technology and um, uh, so we we because of that partnership we've been able to reach out to 54000 plus schools and we've reached almost 13 million youngsters which are participating in india's largest televised quiz show so you know so content like this is going to emerge more stronger uh, wherein uh, which is going beyond um, uh, vanilla advertising uh, as we call it um the other trend uh, uh, will definitely is getting stronger is the and i'm sure you've heard uh, and read about it is the artificial intelligence piece right uh, ai we we will continue to have a transformative impact throughout the media industry primarily through key uh, three important functions one is recommendation voice recognition and media automation so this uh, it it is and is playing a very critical role in the overall content consumption uh, um, um, uh, journey which which uh, which the consumer is going through so since and since the arrival of the streaming services have improved the way we consume content every provider has invested in recommendation technology in order to cater for more uh, to cater more efficiently to audiences 
uh, and with stories that they will find valuable. So, um, you know, whether whether streaming services like Spotify, Netflix, they're all leveraging machine learning algorithms to segment their users and provide shows or playlists along what their preferences are. So, uh, each uh, technology and AI is playing a very critical role in. Um, uh, making a consumer experience more personalized and uh, uh, hence more engaging as well. So that is something uh, you will see a lot more happening in the coming uh, coming years uh, uh, um, uh, in, in, in the entire ecosystem. Um, I think uh, one of the other things I believe uh, which is uh, going to grow is, uh, and is, is, it's still early days is gaming. Um, I think gaming and anim uh, animation will continue to support the creation and consumption in the new normal that, you know, that's gaining and uh, which is gaining an edge over the entertainment option. So um, in the long run, of course, the key drivers would drive gaming consumption in India uh, through smartphone penetration, affordable data services, improving disposable income, supply side uh, factors, deeper adopt adoption to digital platforms. So all that will play a big role, uh, but it also is creating a, a more immersive experience for, for consumers. So uh, maybe not all shows, but certain key franchises can be be created into gaming which will um, uh, which will make that engagement with the consumer much stronger um, so for example um, we launched um, the little singer which is one of our key uh, kids franchise on for discovery kids so we launched the singham game as an extension to the franchise uh, and that went on to garner more than, um, I think, 17 million downloads, you know, throughout the phase of the campaign. So uh, you, you're able to <clears throat> extend your brand and your franchise uh, engagement with your consumer uh, uh, through such uh, intervention. So hence, gaming uh, will play a bigger role, in my view, which is going to get stronger. Uh, however, having said that, it's not it's not going to happen immediately. It's a it's a long term perspective uh, because India, you know, I, you know, we, I always say there are many Indias within India. So there are certain segments of the country uh, or certain um, uh, uh, sort of demographics of the country, which will be the early adopters and more engagement uh, will engage better in gaming. But there's a large segment which is still, um, you know, there are parts of the country which don't even have TV still. Uh, so, um, you know, maybe they will get into mobile first and that definitely might happen. And in that through, uh, maybe gaming will play a critical role as well. Two other things which I don't, uh, I mean, I don't want to talk too much about it because these are still early days, but we do hear a lot about uh, this happening is the metaverse and the NFTs. Um, I think, uh, uh, you know, this is, a, this is a space which is, it's, it's very exciting for sure, but it's a, it's a space which I think for me, who comes from a little more traditional bag, uh, you know, environment uh, for my age group, I think uh, we are still sort of trying to understand how this will really work in the real world when you're creating these unreal worlds, how will this, you know, how will the real and the unreal world coexist? And how will you make this a monetizable business proposition? I think these are early days, but when I talk to my daughters and, you know, children of that age group, that's the, that's the conversation you're hearing, you know, whether it's NFT, blockchain, metaverse. So to me, it's a bit uh, alien, <laughs> but, uh, uh, but I think it is it is definitely uh, it, it will emerge a strong uh, play in, in our overall ecosystem. But I think in my view, it's a bit early days to believe that, you know, that's completely going to uproot the, uh, the, the traditional way of existence in the media and entertainment and content consumption space. Uh, so I think that's really uh, uh, we'll have to balance this out, how this plays out. So, uh, you know, there is there are businesses of today and there are businesses of future. So right now we are balancing uh, how we need to make up today's business strong so that uh, so we can work on tomorrow's business as well. And those are the things which will sort of play out um, 
uh, in the coming months and years. So these are a few key trends one one seeing in the market in the industry. Um, I also see that uh, there will be some bit of consolidation uh, which will take place. You know, there are something like 40, 45 OTT players in the country today. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's, I mean, in, it's tough to, to make all that business work, right? So uh, how much time does, do all of you consume content uh, uh, on, you know, how many, at best four, five uh, uh, apps you may have to create, you know, have your engagement. So, um, so hence uh, it will become very important for players to create a differentiated offering, which is why we believe Discovery Plus uh, could stand out in the crowd because it brought about a differentiated offering. Um, in, in the world of uh, like a Me Too, everything was looking similar. Everyone was fighting the um, uh, fiction war. Uh, Discovery Plus came with a very uh, refreshed approach. So, uh, you know, the best of real life entertainment, global uh, library, and then of course our original content, which connected with our audiences uh, is something which uh, added um, to the overall offering. So I always said uh, Discovery Plus is a complementary proposition. Uh, it's not, um, it's not either or like if you want to watch Netflix and Prime and Z and whatever the fiction uh, offering which uh, is there for you. Uh, and we all want to watch it. I love to watch it, of course. But we get, we also like to watch content like Discovery Plus and hence we make a very nice uh, complimentary player play uh, uh, as well. So I think that's uh, going to be an important aspect as well for uh, for people to survive that how do you bring that differentiated uh, offering uh, so it's not only and then of course the pricing of it you know it's very it is going to be the share of wallet at the end of the day every consumer has got to decide how much am I going to pay for this content right uh, we've we've reached a space where um, finally consumer is paying for content which is great uh, but uh, there is only that limited five for him or her to spend so they will make choices you know on what to pay for because there's cable bill to be played there's there's a broadband bill to be played there's to, there's content bill to be paid so how much of that is going to be uh, their their choice is uh, you know their um, uh, ability to spend is going to be an uh, interesting way to see how that plays out so these are the four five things uh, which i thought i'll put into the mix and then I'm happy to, um, you know, uh, answer any questions you may have. Wonderful. Thank you very much, uh, Ms. Megha. I think that's a pretty good and large canvas that you've covered in a short span of time. And I'm very happy that you did it so beautifully well. Uh, Thank you. Uh, just to capture these uh, two, three, four points, uh, interestingly, during the pandemic, we have seen the beauty of OTT. Any product that could come into our living rooms uh, the fastest was OTT. I think during that time, myself and many of my friends and everyone around the country have watched maximum binge watching, as you call, movies and series and things like that. And that's when we started discussing what is the differentiated content made available by various competing channels. And then the discussion went to a different level altogether. I think, uh, as you rightly mentioned, the, the content in various vernacular languages is what is the... Uh, surge of demand going to be on and, uh, and and all channels will have to compete on that space uh, while providing uh, regional content. Uh, absolutely, uh, that's where people like me have liked Malayalam movies more, although I don't speak and I don't understand uh, that particular language. But but now I think it's, it's like diversity and oneness is coming into play when consumer choices are, are actually uh, very, very rich like this. You have so many 44 OTTs providing so much of content. As you rightly said, we are spoiled for choice sometimes. Uh, but that is a wonderful uh, space to keep watching. You're doing extremely well, uh, as you have identified. Uh, AI is, uh, apart from various other technologies, AI is going to play a very strong role in terms of the recommendation technology, uh, automation, and apart from that, of course, the uh, the voice recognition part, uh, as you mentioned. So several uh, trends are there. Gaming is going to improve. Uh, the, the largest growth is in terms of uh, gaming, uh, visual effects, but everything will take time, as you have rightly mentioned. You are the industry veteran. You know it better. Uh, but my pa participants are waiting to interact with you. 
they would like to understand a little more about each of these points and we will take it in a structured manner through the Q&A session. I once again welcome uh, Professor Mahindra Reddy is our Honorable Vice Chancellor who has joined. Uh, I can see his name in the list and many other friends and well-wishers who have joined from various parts of the country and some of them from the US as well. Uh, so I welcome all of them once again. Ladies and gentlemen, we are in conversation with Ms. Megha Tata, the Managing Director for South Asia in Warner Brothers Discovery. So we will now start the Q&A session and I welcome Professor R. Prasad. Professor Prasad, over to you. Thank you, Professor Rao. Ma'am, you have covered a lot of terrain in a space which is highly dynamic and highly innovative, which involves uh, the consumer directly as well as technology. And uh, I don't know too many spaces which have such kind of, uh, you know, interaction taking place and very, very volatile kind of a space. So the, uh, the first question would be about your journey. I mean, how did you uh, make decisions about your career, the progress that you have made in your career. How did you make your choices right up to Discovery Plus? Oh my God. You said you have only half an hour. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, oh, my journey has been uh, uh, a mix, you know, a combination of uh, multiple things. I think uh, uh, I, I, I would sort of uh, that it's, it's a long, uh, it can be a long answer. I'll try to make it a short one by saying that uh, I think I, I made some choices. Mm, I made those choices uh, 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 very consciously. And uh, uh, some, sometimes in hindsight, some of those choices may not have been the right ones. But I think uh, I sort of worked on uh, a key premise of the fact that, you know, this is uh, of self-belief, really, and identifying what I really want to do and, and, and whatever the choice I make, then I live with it happily, whether it is the right or wrong choice, you live with it happily with no regrets. So, um, so my career journey started um, uh, almost now 30 plus years ago, where I Came in. My dad was from Air Force. Uh, my mom and dad sort of moved around all around the country. So I've literally lived from Kashmir to Kanyakumari and uh, uh, eventually came into Mumbai and uh, did my colleging from here. Uh, I did want to do my, um, uh, you know, uh, MBA at that time because I, I was confused what I wanted to do, but my friends were doing MBA. I said, I will, I will also try. Uh, but I got a job, which was a walk-in interview at that time. This is all, this is happening when there was no cable and satellite. So there was only one Doordarshan channel, which you might be aware. Um, so in those times, uh, we have, were launching a, a business, a sort of a video news magazine, actually. So that is how I sort of got in my first job, which was a company called, um, it was part of a Dalmia Group company, um, which was called ITV Indian Television, which was also merged with a newspaper called Sunday Mail. Um, and I, I started my career with them. I never went back. It was a walk-in interview. I got into that job and my job started uh, literally door-to-door -door selling. So that's how I started my career, going from home to home, uh, selling this product, um, you know, yeah, as, a, as a pure quintessential salesperson and going into the buildings, which used to say, say uh, dogs and salespeople not allowed. So, <laughs> uh, you know, from there, uh, moved into um, uh, Star TV, which was just launching at that time, spent about 12 years there, uh, then joined Turner, uh, was there for nine, spent two years with HBO after that, went to Reliance, joined, launched a business news channel and then came into Discovery. So yeah, over the, over the 30 years, uh, sort of have, have uh, spent a decent chunk of change on um, I guess mostly I've been multinational organizations, uh, except for one stint. Uh, and I think the journey has been absolutely brilliant. Um, you know, it has its ups and downs for sure, like everybody, uh, because we all know life is not a walk in the park. Uh, so we, we did, uh, I did have my share of challenges, but I think what I started with that, I believe, you know, self-belief and, uh, uh, not not getting affected by what the world has to think or say and and uh, uh, really focus on uh, you know your strengths and um, also be aware of your weaknesses. I think that's important. you know no one's perfect. 
um, and we're human beings at the end of the day. So you cannot and will not know everything all, uh, everything all the time, which is fine. Uh, but acknowledging that is important. I think people just lose, um, lose the focus when um, they think that they can solve all the problems, which is not a fact. Nobody can. Um, and, uh, but if you have the right questions, you have the right people, um, you can overcome those uh, challenges as well. So I think uh, in nutshell, uh, Professor Prasad, I don't know whether I answered that question. Yes, ma'am. I think you have, uh, uh, let me put it this way. I think uh, for a lot of people in the audience, many of whom are going through career journeys, very important to understand how to make one's own career journey, personalize that career journey, and then make it as productive as one can. And I think you have given the anchors around which uh, that can be built. So I think uh, it does inform us about, you know, uh, you know, what we need to reflect on when we want to make career choices. Thank you, ma'am. I move to yeah. the next question. In the market that you're in, trends change every day, digital entertainment market. How do you stay up to date and how do you make choices? What is What are the process by which you make choices? For instance, you know, you made a choice about uh, the legends of the Ramayana or about Singham. So how do you make those choices? How do you make those decisions? That is one part of it. And the other part of it is how do you stay up to date in all this voluminous turbulence which is going on around you? So first you have to stay calm. Okay, because there is going to be lots of action around you all the time right so you your mind and and body needs to be in a stable state of play because only if your mind is stable you will think properly um and for that i highly recommend people to do things which are a bit more inward looking some kind of um, uh, inward journey or some kind of spiritual journey so that it keeps you balanced in the in the mad world we live in so, so that's, that's, that's point number one. In terms of choices and um, how do I keep updated? So how do I keep updated is by being around uh, people who know more than me. So there is no way for me to believe that I will know it all. And at my age, it is not easy to study. I never liked to study even when I was, when it was my age to study. So I... I definitely am not in a, in the, in that age and mindset that okay I will learn. So I learn from being around people who um, uh, who know more than me, and from there I understand the new trends. I keep track of that. Uh, I learn from my children. You know, I have two daughters, um, uh, and uh, you know they're grown up. I mean, that one is twenty four and one is twenty, and and I think these are the these are the age group really where I they are more of the, the you know generation of today and future so I understand a bit more from them on how what are the trends happening how is the content being consumed what is being happening the whole digital ecosystem the social media ecosystem is something which is very new to me for sure you know and to all of us who are in this age group uh, so but 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 if you don't embrace change you will get left behind so you have to learn and uh, work um, and find your own um, your own path you know some people uh, join courses and workshops and you know learn from there some people read some people listen some people like me hang around with people and and understand from them be in part of networks to know more how these things work so that's how i keep myself abreast and apprised on um you know what's happening and what are the trends in the industry and so forth so forth. i'm a big believer in networks and networking um and hence uh, be part of associations and organizations uh, associations specifically which where you can um, lean into each other, talk to people, like, for example, associations like International Advertising Association, which I'm a president of as well. Um, it is, uh, it's a great platform for people like-minded professionals to come and, uh, you know, share knowledge and learn from each other. So things like that is something we, I definitely use that as a way to learn. Uh, making choices are never easy, frankly, Professor, because uh, you know, you always make some right, some wrong choices. But uh, I think you, there is a, it's like it's art and a science. So there is a bit of gut and a bit of analysis, right? 
So research does play a role, uh, but too much of analysis, as we know, also leads to paralysis. So it has to be a balanced approach, you know. Um, so I, you, we have to have, uh, you take the data points, of course, but when you're making certain creative decisions, you can't be depending purely on data. You've got to understand the pulse of the consumer. You've got to know what he or she wants. And, and so it's a combination of that. So that's how you take those calls. But uh, if there are business decisions, that's that can be a bit more uh, uh, scientific, I would say, a bit more clinical maybe. But, uh, but when it comes to creative decisions, it has to be a combination of those things. And that's how the team works on, um, you know, uh, whether it's my our content head, creative head, whether it's for kids or, 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 or discovery or discovery plus, uh, it is a combination of these things. So legends of Ramayan, for example, um, is a great example. Uh, it, it's, it's a show uh, which, um, uh, you know, we know all, everyone knows about Ramayan, right? We all have at any, at some point, know something about Ramayan. But uh, we, we wanted to put, it a, put a discovery lens to it and say that, okay, what, what if we make it into like a travelogue? Like what, you know, capture the, the journey of Lord Ram and, and how did that play out, you know, and see how it relates to in today's world. And that was the angle. So now there was, there was a bit of gut because you know that that's discoveries thing to bring in that but you you added data to research to know the real aspects of it so that you're not um, because this is a, this is an epic you can't you know the research has to be very very uh, pure so that bit of credibility had to be brought in through the various um, research uh, uh, researchers and the r d was very very strong uh, for this show so a combination of that led to this uh, magic of um, Lord Ram and, and, and it's one of our most successful shows since we've launched. So, so that's how I guess, uh, you know, we take those decisions for everything. I think that's uh, very insightful, ma'am. I think the first point is about, you know, the need to stay calm uh, and compulsorily <laughs> in the kind of field that you are in and many of us are in. And uh, I think the other thing that you've uh, mentioned is, you know, may not be reverse mentoring, but certainly some reverse uh, information uh, flow which is taking place between the younger generation and uh, the older generation and I think you know it is uh, very important for uh, members as they age to have the humility to accept these things and I think you you have really been at the eye of the world uh, no, the, the storm and uh, been able mm -hmm. to get that which you need to understand because you know perhaps in your role you need to understand far more of this than many others who are not in that kind of a role and with no background sure. at all. Okay, ma'am. We, we move to the next question, ma'am. And this is uh, also connected to the International Advertising Association uh, thing. With this form of digital entertainment uh, coming in, how is marketing or advertising as a practice going to change? Are the principles, are there some new principles or the principles remain the same? And how is the practice going to evolve? How is it going to become, you know, how do people like us uh, who come from that field, uh, the management field, what kind of, what do, what do we need to know? in terms of uh, a field like yours? No, I think the, <clears throat> it has changed a lot, uh, for sure. The way you market your product and the way you reach out to your consumer is no more the same that was even five years ago, for that matter. Um, you know, and I think this is what has happened. You know, what was scheduled to happen maybe five years from now, uh, like, uh, you know, when we were all, before the pandemic, we were all, putting our plans together, we, you know, there was a, there was a milestone or a timeline you had created that, okay, this is the evolution which will happen in five to seven years. But what pandemic then, it just accelerated that whole thing. So the whole, you know, all what was probably going to happen in five to seven years happened in two. And because of that, there was a lot of unpreparedness by the industry, by the markets, by the businesses. And they were all, they all started sort of figuring out what's the best way to deal with this change, which is like hit everybody on our faces, like really strongly. So whether it is uh, the content consumption and the consumer moving away from say traditional to uh, digital mediums. So because that, that change took place, um, obviously the marketers have to also find a way to reach their consumer in different, different ways. And, uh, and that's where all the technology started playing a big role. So digital uh, consumption and uh, dig uh, digital metrics have, 
have come in play. So when you look at the advertising across um, uh, digital platforms, it's far more, um, uh, uh, you can see it as glass half full, as in like it's very, uh, you it's all data centric. So you know who you're marketing and why you're marketing and how, what's your ROI, it's better, better platform. Uh, but but there are a, there are areas of gray which uh, still we don't know exactly how much money you need to spend to really see the uh, genuine ROI of it, you know. And that's one area which um, I guess there will be more work which will need to be done on that. Uh, but if you also look at the reality, however, uh, Professor, is that you know. 80% of the revenue, the digital revenue is made by just two platforms, which is Google and Facebook, right? So this whole digital revenue uh, opportunity has to be really thought through. Who's actually making the money? So the question is that, um, you know, even when we look at digital propositions and, and how do we monetize it, the chat. Today, the monetization in the broadcast community and the broadcast world, it's still coming from television. It is the, the digital business is important, but it's not making money yet. And the, 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 the reality is that it is the, it is the traditional business which is funding the digital business. And so how does this play out in, in the long run is, um, you know, I wish we all had a crystal ball to gaze and make those uh, predictions. But we have to see how this works out, you know. So the balancing of these two is very important. So, so hence to market those consumers, it is very, uh, it has changed. So the, the algorithms are different, how you reach to them, in how, how much duration you need to communicate. Like, you know, we, there was from 30 seconds from, it's now three seconds. You have to now manage to communicate the same message in three seconds, you know. So literally, we are in a three second to three hour communication world, three seconds on um, on the social platforms to three hours of movies, right? That's the range of uh, duration you're dealing with and the consumer pattern, right? And imagine uh, you're dealing with a, a, a consumer who is uh, whose attention to span is three seconds. <laughs> Like in three seconds, he wants to skip an ad. Like he doesn't want to wait for, for, for a 30 second ad to finish. In three seconds, he wants to skip an ad. Now that kind of consumer, you have to find a way to communicate your message uh, in, in the most concise manner is not an easy job. So I think it's the job's getting more and more tougher for marketers, frankly. Um, and you there has to be, there has to be uh, metrics figured out on how you can make that uh, uh, a cost-effective ROI-led uh, marketing plans. And, um, you know, I'm not, a, I'm not a marketing professional as such. So, I mean, uh, but I, I think this is, this is how I see uh, the challenge is in the, in, the real, uh, in the real world. Thank you, ma'am. Through your questions, you have indeed given a lot of insights into where the issues are. And, you know, it's very interesting because uh, whenever I open Facebook, the Discovery Plus uh, Legends of the Ramayana <laughs> keeps coming. I mean, I've seen that. I have not clicked on that it. Means, so... <laughs> that means my marketing team is doing a good job. <laughs> Absolutely. Because every time it's opened, I see it. And I've been noticing, you know, this, this it doesn't go off. So that is one side of it. And the other side of it, which you mentioned and very revealingly is about the ROI. So at the stage where uncertain spends, as you mentioned, for ROI, that's the stage where the, I think the understanding of this particular science, though it is a data science at the beginning of the funnel towards the ROI side, it's not as clear as that. So I think that's one issue that you have raised. And uh, I think uh, uh, that's some that gives us a lot of insight in, in terms of what we also do. And the other major thing that you mentioned is that traditional business is funding uh, uh, digital business to a very large extent. I think, uh, I think the issues are very clear, ma'am. And I think, and I think, you know, some more signs will come into the ROI part as well. Thank you very much. Great. I have another last question in this cluster, ma'am. And uh, this is about the potential for, uh, uh, you know, Indian content, Indian entertainment content, such as what you have on a global platform. What do you see? Uh, where, where does this go? Oh, 
it's uh, the potential is huge absolutely and <clears throat> uh, and and the world is one family now right so and and that's the that whole connection of the whole world through technology is the beauty of you know of of being able to cross pollinate content um and that's what's happened because whether you're sitting in uh, a jharkhand you can still be watching a korean show uh, or you can be sitting in seoul and you can be watching a, a, a malayalam movie right so so i think the the fact is that that this whole world has sort of become one in many ways um and platforms like ours we are able to showcase because you're globally present and so you can show our the indian content internationally and the international content in india uh, and that definitely is already happening so no, there's nothing new in that that's already taking place but uh, ha, you know squid games is always referred to one asian like a regional show which has taken the world by storm and you know and and it was a global hit i don't think so one any as of now uh, any indian show has made it to that level so uh, can that happen absolutely yes when can that happen maybe tomorrow maybe two years maybe i don't know but i think uh, the opportunity definitely technology has given us that opportunity to do it now it is about coming the creative uh, people have to come up with an idea and an approach which can sort of cut across uh, the globe so uh, yeah so right now anyway content is getting consumed across the globe thank you ma'am i think you know uh, uh, you have kept the door open and i think there is a lot of possibility in what you've said and it was also interesting about the pitch that on the travel oak part that you made on the ramayana very slightly different way of looking at it and i'm sure many more ideas will come on how uh, others will find it far more interesting than we do thanks a lot uh, this is the end of this cluster i hand it back to professor rao thank you thank you very much uh, professor prasad <clears throat> when you when you graciously hand it over back to me i only think that you have just left 10 minutes for me <laughs> <laughs> but then uh, i think uh, uh, such is the discussion so interesting and uh, there is much more to discuss and many more questions to be asked but i'll just stick to only two questions in this cluster meanwhile ladies and gentlemen please uh, raise your hands if you want to ask any question directly uh, that we will take as a priority uh, so let me see the raised hands if any and then i'll come to those hands uh, once i finish these two questions ma'am uh, these questions are very simple you have answered many uh, other questions related to what i have but i'll just stick to just these two uh, as we all know innovation is a continuous process and uh, what do you see is there anything beyond digital feature in in this space beyond digital beyond di- the one thing that we always talk about beyond digital is metaverse likewise in general specific to your yeah. space, within your space of media and entertainment what are things beyond digital no like i mentioned in my uh, talk as well that you know i mean metaverse is is evolving i think it's early days to be honest uh, uh, and I, i've got i mean it's i don't know much about it to have a point of view let's let me put it this way and let me be honest about it uh, i've been hearing about it i've been seeing things happening there are launches happening i think um, there was a movie which got So the trailer of Radhe Sham got launched, I think, on on a metaverse, and uh, you know, songs are getting launched, and things are happening. You know, I I think anything in life for to for it to be there forever uh, needs to have a proposition which is sustainable, and and I think that's uh, something I I am not fully, uh, to be honest. averse uh, uh, aware of the this this part of the world to have a point of view so i think uh, early days i would say so that could yes yes it is actually emerging and it is very difficult to say anything about it but as you rightly said sustainable proposition is something which will help us say something on that and if you see that probably with people like uh, people with your kind of experience will be able to comment on that but it is too early for any one of us to even take a stand on that absolutely fine uh, i'll take another question which is uh, the subscription video on demand what should be the future ecosystem of svod any thoughts on this ma'am 
Well, uh, frankly, um, S board is is here to stay, and um, it is um, it's a it's like I said, you know, finally the consumer is paying for content because all this while. Uh, there is a that it takes money to make content you know you know it doesn't happen out of thin air you have to spend a lot of money to give you that quality of content which every consumer has got used to it through these international uh, uh, exposures of content they're getting on these platforms right so when you're you're going to spend that money you have to make money right so how do you make money uh, through uh, you know there are limited means advertising so far has been the only way to make that now um, that has its limitation so paying for content had to be uh, a way uh, to make a business work and uh, so that, that in that sense i think it's wonderful that finally we've come around that in the ecosystem so sbord is definitely here to say in fact abord which is the advertising video on demand uh, is also an important play and if there can be uh, both abord and sbord to survive together is an ideal scenario uh, but uh, you know i think it, it, it every business has to take those decisions where you want to put your money in either an a ward or s ward so so yes so s ward is definitely here to stay great s ward is here to stay and if possible coexist with a ward wonderful i think those are wonderful takeaways for us ma'am uh, there is one question and very interesting this was a question even to me uh, when i watched my children uh, constantly engaged with the korean content now suddenly in our house uh, btt is very popular and then various other korean movies are extremely popular this cultural invasion uh, has has come into my home without my knowledge and i'm now suddenly realize and and don't tell anyone i i feel far far behind this generation so so ma'am how why do you think it has become popular why korean content has become so much popular I mean, I don't know, frankly. I mean, it's a personal choice of what's becoming popular, what's not. It's people are. Uh, I think uh, uh, the fact that uh, I mean, like, I'll give you my my own personal view about Squid Games, right? You know, I mean, I've never I'd never watched uh, uh, Korean content at all. I knew of uh, my friends, my children's friends in that age group. People were watching a bit of Korean and did BTS and. uh one direction no no one direction some some band is their korean band who is like people are going and these kids were singing the korean song they were ma- literally mouthing it they knew the lyrics i said you know what you're singing this you know we don't understand it but they just knew it so that that in that age group you could see that was building but when squid games happened and everyone just found it literally like very uh never seen before you know uh it was it, it that's what i think appealed to a lot of us you know it, it was quite bizarre um it was quite uh, ne- you know quite uh, erratic nothing you 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 wouldn't you would have never seen something like this on television basically and that sort of got everybody intrigued like you know you know oh my god what is this like i am like like someone just commented a shock value exactly this is what that really what was like shock you know what what is this happening what is this what is this rubbish so but it was so rubbish that you wanted to watch it again and then you wanted to watch the next episode <laughs> so they just captured that you know and that's probably what i mean that's what appealed to me and i think when i talk to my friends and all we all watch it for that same bizarre reason so i i think everyone has their own view uh but but even even for that matter like suddenly people are talking about malayalam movies right yes. and it's not like that malayalam movies didn't exist they were always they were wonderful films even 30 years ago right but it's just that today technology has given you access to watch such wonderful content now you can be sitting anywhere in the world and watch that i think that is where the overall uh, play out has changed and hence i think uh, you you know there's more and more more and more of that crazy stuff which will happen amazing amazing lots of shock values yeah uh one last question i will take before uh sanjay would you like to ask that question yourself uh you can open your mic and ask but i'll finish my question uh what are your plans for entering regional ott space in india uh our plans specifically there aren't any 
to to get into regional but regional play is an important play to to most of the platforms i mean for us as well uh, we have our content dubbed in uh, uh, tamil telugu uh, bengali uh, uh, besides hindi and english of course but so there is uh, that that continues to be a priority for us uh but i think regionalization of content is going to be an important play for a lot of people uh, you know a lot of platforms uh, uh and like i said you know this the examples of the movies you've seen from south of india um becoming uh, sleeper hits in theaters i think is a good uh, reference point of how consumer choice is changing and and it, you know it doesn't matter which language you come from uh as long as i can listen to it in the language of my choice i'm i'm good with it um so i think um uh, regionalization is going to play so dubbing subtitling these are all play plays uh, tools which will help you to connect uh, with the with that content in the language of your choice thank you thank you very much on that uh, how do you see a digital ent- entertainment ending up in the next say 5 years ha uh, uh, too too many um sort of variables involved in that um, frankly so um, i think two three things which will happen is of course um, consolidation to some extent i mean there are 45 plus players uh, to be able to sustain that that is going to be a challenge uh, which we are seeing happening anyways you know we are seeing z and sony merger happening we are seeing uh, there is some you know uh, you saw warner brothers and discovery merger happening so you know these are all mergers which will happen and then there'll be some bit of consolidation because at the end of the day consumer wants it simple they don't want so much you know they want to take a few and pay one one amount and then watch as much as possible on uh, a few platforms so that's that's how probably it will play out and um, uh, like i said technology will only make it more um, your consumer experience will be an important part to 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 make the differentiator uh, how i consume the content how i pay for that content how much do i pay for the content how much how much easier is it for me how much easier are you making my life as a consumer is what i think at the end of the day a consumer will decide uh, what he or she wants to pay uh, and watch right i think a lot of it will be shaped by the consumer preferences which are fast changing and we need to see this not in the next 5 years but i think every year and many times in the year as well these things are changing one need to put the finger on the pulse of the consumer and try and uh, customize try and actually play around that in order to provide and satisfy uh, the customer so uh, ms mega so uh, the the questions that we have in this cluster are over and i was trying to read the uh, questions in the chat box we will come to that a little later but i'll request uh, now the time is 8:31 uh, that is the time that i have asked you from uh, and uh, i'll request quickly if professor prasad has any question but before he asks i will i will put him in a fix the question to professor prasad and you can answer ma'am is professor prasad now heads uh, our uh, digital arm uh, he is the professor and mentor for the online program so it's a fully online program he is the architect and uh, this program has been recently launched many people have joined they are doing this mba program uh, often i feel that uh, the biggest competitor to uh, a fully online program like this is the ott world and you are one of them so uh, between both of you you will have to now resolve how this competition and uh, what kind of uh, tips that you can give us so that we can also try and compete better or how how we can work around this kind of competition and onslaught to make sure that our students come back to our classes and stick to this wonderful program that professor prasad has created over to both of you i think you should just make it more, more you need to make it more engaging i think that's where the problem is see there is a there is a whole uh, fatigue which is hit in in the online world you know so first of all ideally best to come into the into the offline world and make people come into student into a classroom and engage better and i think that is a good step forward i think students are all fed up uh, sitting at home and you know i i really don't even know how they did it uh, whoever did it managed hats off to all those students who managed to study uh, through a medium like this it's it's not easy um but so getting them offline would is a good starting point but i think more than more than that is also 
um, you know, engaging better with them through real life experiences. I think that there's no, I mean, books and um, theory is always good to give you a framework, but the reality, the real world is pretty different. And I think if you can have a more, um, uh, uh, you know, uh, I'm sure you have uh, professionals coming and talking to your students and, and that's that's a good place. So, so maybe that's something, maybe make it more engaging for them to come uh, is how probably, uh, maybe is one of the ways, I guess. Yes, uh, Professor Rao. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, do you have any, you, you have any response to what ma'am has said and yeah, yeah. you can also ask your question and uh, yeah. then I'll come back to wrap it up. Yeah, this is in fact a very good question. Uh, what we saw as important and what uh, uh, we think as important uh, six months earlier is not necessarily what is important now. And there is a need because traditional education has viewed education and established itself in a certain way. And a lot of paradigms which are extremely strong in traditional education, campus-based education. Uh, the fact that there is a life in the campus and there's a two years of uh, experience in the campus is, makes a huge difference. So when you're actually talking about it from a fully online kind of an experience, you, you need to, you need to, you need to look at it in a completely different way. So uh, ma'am talked about three seconds, the same thing exists, you know, in, uh, uh, the question is, why should I watch this video? It may be, you know, you may have the best of companies, real life situations in that even, even that is a question. Why should I watch? Suppose it's a three minute video, three second videos for learning may be very difficult, but three minute videos, take three minute videos, one of the shortest that we can do. The question also is, why do I need to watch that? But it's how you, how you make that video. No, absolutely. Because, absolutely. Because, uh, yeah. It's not yes. about just the duration. It's also about yes, the, yes. the way you engage. Yes. So of course, when we did the design, we bought in, you know, you started with a story and then came to the question. So we have a real life application, which is briefed and captured in a certain way. And then we come to the question, which is asked. But there are other points. The point is that all of us are competing for the same time of that person. The OTT is competing for that time. The learning person is also competing for the time. And the person has so many other priorities that they have. They have to earn their own bread, which gets most of their priority. And then they come back and, and do all this. So the fact is that this 24 hours is fixed and we are all competing for this time. And that is a very, very critical point. The second point is that what we have found is when we start making it a bit more personalized into his work, imagining situations which could happen in that particular work, which we have begun to do in the last two, three months, far more than what we used to do earlier. We find that there is a pull. There is a pull which comes because it's not the same thing that everyone has to do. It is different from person to person. So what we are able to imagine and here faculty have a, it's a disruptor because faculty will have to do a lot of visualization before they get to this. And it's, it's quite possible to do, but it involves a completely different time of type of time. It's not session time. It's not class time. It is time by which you are able to creatively connect between what the person is likely to look at in this work and how you're able to connect it with your framework. So the case study is inside the organization. And the person who's going to create the case study is the student, much like the metaverse, the experience, which is created by the person who's engaging with the metaverse. So there is some similarity there and it requires a lot of work. We're just at the beginning stages of it. And hopefully we should be able to do something about it. Wonderful. I think, uh, I think there are lots of uh, plans and uh, strategies that Professor Prasad is engaging in to customize, personalize uh, the learning aspects in the online MBA program. Thank you very much. Uh, I, was, I was not putting it across as a joke, but I thought something credible, something useful will come out of this conversation. So I asked you that question. Uh, very nice. Thank you very much for sharing the plans of personalization with each and every student, which connects to his world of work or her world of work. Thank you very much. Uh, if anybody else would like to ask questions, you can raise the hand. Otherwise, uh, we have Pankaj Kumar, asking too many questions. So I thought we'll open the window for Pankaj Kumar and then close it. Pankaj Kumar, would you like to ask the question? Okay, we will leave it at that. And uh, what I now do is uh, I'll try and sum up. But before that, 
This has been a wonderful session, Ms. Megha Tata. I think uh, the life of a managing director is something that we have stumbled upon, uh, especially <laughs> when you're working with a huge uh, multinational conglomerate like this. And, uh, and at a very, very busy time that you are in, when the merger happened between Warner Brothers and the Discovery, uh, in spite of, you could have easily told me that you will never be able to talk to us uh, and then excuse yourself. But uh, the professional in you has uh, helped us to connect with you and uh, stay on this program. So I must thank from the bottom of my heart for your presence, uh, wonderful. And uh, not only the life of a managing director, but what you have given is a very new kind of facet. When things are changing so fast, like it is happening in the industry that you belong to, you have advised us to stay calm. I think that's a fantastic point. I think most of the times we don't stay calm and we end up making wrong decisions because stable mind is something, as you said, uh, will help you deal with these kind of mad, mad uh, situations. And uh, inward, uh, inward looking, inward journeys are possible. Like you are with the, you are also a volunteer for the, for the Isha Foundation. Probably that's where you picked it up. But uh, it is a suggestion to everyone. They can find their own organization, their own uh, meditation uh, methods possible to connect inwardly, so that uh, they stay calm and they. Uh, optimize on the energies that they have to take good decisions in their businesses and in lives. And that's a wonderful lesson for us. The second one is uh, that there are many Indias in India. We always have been knowing that this is a plural country, multiple tastes, several languages, and uh, several genres will appeal to several clusters of people. And therefore, it's, it's a very, very complicated structure. But regional content, with the help of uh, emerging technologies, will help us steer forward in appealing to them and AI will play a major role as we have discussed. The third and third or the fourth point is about the real success of uh, a corporate uh, professional in business or probably in life also is uh, due to the combination of analytics and gut feel. I think analytics is analytics it will provide. Uh, you are trained to actually look at analytics and take that data. But in spite of having the data, your gut feel says, gut feel comes because of variety of experiences or because of the kind of person that you are having spent so many years in one industry or dealing with one particular subject, there is a gut feel. And if that gut feel is in case different from analytics, then one would go by the gut feel. But traditionally, uh, when I hear from various leaders on this platform over the last 52 weeks, we have understood that success is equal to gut feel plus analytics. And that's the best combination. And differentiation is what will help us win the game. That's the fifth point, uh, whether it is uh, digital entertainment or specifically OTT or even online programs that we are running, differentiation is the way to win. And the more immersive an experience that you can provide, like the way you move from the general digital entertainment to gaming, uh, what kind of immersive programs that we can offer in our online MBA program also will probably determine. That's the connect I draw. That's the lesson I have. Uh, Ma'am, I want to just remind you that the people who are attending, they are not our students. They are basically working in a variety of uh, domains, industries like uh, pharma, sports, social life, engineering, IT. Uh, probably some of them are from media as well, uh, media and entertainment industry as well. And the range, the sixth point is the range of uh, uh, touch points and the challenges that we have to deal is a three second attention span to a three hour product that we have to do in the world of media and entertainment. That's a very, very big challenge. And organizations will have to get up to meet this real challenge. And consolidation, that's the next point, is happening. Many mergers, many acquisitions will take place. And uh, and wonderfully, how, how, how the customer will will actually be in the forefront to uh, guide these things happening because customer would like to have certain things which are very simple. At the same time, the choices are quite uh, multiple. They're quite manifold. So therefore, it is going to be difficult. It's not easy. And as we consolidate, probably the strengths of different organizations will come together, help see the customer, read the customer, and provide whatever is required. And that's a, that's a wonderful uh, way of uh, 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 analyzing how the business is going to move forward. And one interesting point that you mentioned is that, uh, uh, not, in, not in exact words, but if you are the smartest person in the room, you should just get out of the room. 
and you would like to spend your time with the smartest people around always so that you pick up a few lessons and you would like to improvise, grow yourself and, and try to lead a better life in business or in real life, in, in life other than business. So I think that's a very important point that you mentioned. And your journey has been very, very inspiring, ma'am, uh, from a D2D uh, selling job initially to managing director uh, South Asia for a multinational conglomerate like uh, one of others discovery is an amazingly impressive journey. And if others have not told you, I will say this on uh, this platform that you don't look like a mother of a 24 year old or 20 year old. Uh, I'm quite, <laughs> well, yeah, I, I have to say this and uh, you kept yourself calm and you look very young, you look very sharp and you talk extremely, extremely sharp in terms of your industry, in terms of how to handle oneself, lessons for management, lessons for success, and uh, you are completely hands-on managing director. Your presence today has been immensely beneficial to me as well as all our participants. I must thank you once again for this wonderful uh, discussion that we have had with you. Thank you, thank you so much. What a wonderful summary that was, uh, Sudhakar, really. Uh, it really captured everything really well. And thank you so much uh, for this opportunity, for its interaction. I hope this was helpful to people who listened in. Uh, it, is, uh, it is quite an exciting time to be part of this industry. Uh, uh, exciting, yes, uh, but uh, we have to tread with caution because it, is, it, is qu it can be quite overwhelming. Um, as far as keeping a balance is concerned and the calm is concerned, uh, you know, like Sadhguru says, uh, in is the only way out. Uh, so that's, uh, I, I'm a big believer in that uh, theory. So um, try to look inwards and, you know, a lot of things will happen uh, outside, which you can then deal with. So, uh, yeah, I hope everybody gets some bit of, uh, as I say, a little drop of spirituality in your life, because that, that's all it takes to keep yourself calm. <laughs> Great. So man. thank you. Thank you so much once thank again. You. Uh, thank you very much from all of us. From all of us here, we would like to thank you. We'll stay connected with you and try to keep learning from you. Uh, so, thank ladies you. and gentlemen, this has been a wonderful conversation as you have participated and as you have witnessed, and several questions remained. Uh, uh, you know, there are layers and layers of questions. So we will we'll probably write to uh, Ms. Megha about the additional questions that we have and seek answers wherever possible. Uh, but thank you very much for joining all of you. We will thank you. Thank you, ma'am. And uh, thank you all. We will see you next week on Friday, 7.30 p.m. with uh, another leader, Dr. Evita Fernandez, who is the chairperson of Fernandez Foundation. She's an extremely popular doctor. She's a leading obstetrician and gynecologist. And we would like to learn lessons from yet another leader from that domain next Friday at 7.30 p.m. And see you then. Till then, do take care and keep watching Discovery Channel. Mm -hmm.